Uh, good morning. Always been my joy to be with you, and I always see to it that before anything else, we would like to, I mean, before anything else, I would like to thank you all for partnering and, um, and, and supporting our ministry back in the Philippines. If I'm not mistaken, uh, this church has been supporting us for almost 20 years now. Uh, I still remember when you're still in that, in the, in that small church, you've been supporting our ministry. And um, as a result of that, because of that, we've been accomplished a lot of things because of your prayers and support. We've, we've accomplished a lot of things. So as I mentioned that I've been a missionary for 20 years. Um, I started when I was five years old. I'm jo- just joking. So I've been a missionary for 20 years, and because of that, we've, we've, ac- we've accomplished a lot of things. And, um, and in my 20 years as a missionary, we already started four churches in the Philippines. And the recent one was last year when we started our fourth church and it's about 45 minutes away from our main church. So every morning around six o'clock, I have to travel there with my family. Uh, uh, you, even my kids are yet sleeping. I put them in our car and, tra- and drive 45 minutes just to get in that church and preach there from 7.30 to 9.30. And then I need to be back in our main church by 10.30 because I'll be preaching there by 10.30 to 12.30. So by God's grace, we've been accomplishing a lot of things. And as I said, in my 20 years, we already started four churches. And I was, uh, I was able to mentor eight pastors already. Um, six, in which six of which... Uh, of that pastors are the result of our sports evangelism. Uh, Well, Filipinos love sports. So I use that basketball as a tool to get some of our folks. And as a result of that, six of them are surrendered to becoming full-time service. So we have now eight pastors that uh, we're able to train and mentor. So in my 20 years as a ministry, I've seen and helped and so. 25 churches that have been started. Um, because we also, we also have a Bible Institute that we train our own people. After three years, we sent them out and started their own churches. So since 2006, we already have 17 men that graduated from that Bible Institute. Altogether, I can say that there are already hundreds and thousands of Filipinos that we led to the Lord. And I can say that they're all counted in your account in heaven. And I believe that someday, when we all get to heaven, you will be surprised because there will be a lot of short, brown-skinned Filipinos that you've never met before, but they will come to you in heaven and they will shake your hand and they will say thank you for giving to the Lord. Folks, I encourage you that you continue on praying for our ministry, continue on supporting our ministry. So much. But anyway, if you have your Bible, please turn it with me in Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. Well, as I look at your face, whenever I say words, some of you are having hard time understanding my accent, and, uh, I, which I understand you because I even, some of you, Some of you, I mean, I don't even, I I also don't understand some of your accent too. So I'm just trying to be get even. But anyway, so I got some suggestion. If I say a word or words that you cannot understand, I would suggest that you nod your head and pretend that you understand me because that will help me to keep on going. Is that a deal? Okay, Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. We'll just read a very familiar verse in the Bible, and I hope that we can learn something from this verse. Proverbs 29, verse 18. And the Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I'll read it again. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. 
I remember a story about a young man that took over a well-established church. Their attendance was good. Their offering was good. They even paid their building. They're done with all their responsibility. So when this young man took over the ministry, he wanted to introduce another program in the church, which is faith promise giving. Along with that desire, he chose this to become their theme for their mission conference. He even made a caption and, and put it in their stage that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But this young pastor was having a hard time explaining the verse to his congregation because he don't want them to get hurt when he preached this verse. And I've seen that when people become settled in their lives and in their ministry, they tend to become complacent. And that's the problem with a lot of churches now. Complacent. Well, this young pastor was praying to God and he said, Lord, how will I explain this to, how, how will I explain this to people without hurting their feeling? That says where there is no vision, the people perish. He, he was praying to God that he can explain this properly to his congregation. But while he was preaching and he was trying to make uh, his explanation to that verse, along with their caption that says, where there is no vision, the people perish, all of a sudden, something happened. One letter fell off. So when that letter fell off, it explained the whole verse. And everybody in that congregation understood the verse. Now I would like to ask you a question. What would be the letter that fell off? Do you know? The letter W fell off and explained the whole verse. If you read that carefully, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But if you take out the letter W in that first word, what will left? Here, there is no vision, the people perish. And that's the truth. I believe that no organization will survive without vision. Even in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, the Lord has a vision to each of us. Vision is connected with the mind. And sometimes, we limit God with our limited vision. I remember the time when I first moved to our town in Agoula Union. And I told our people about our vision of our church building. I told them that in this place, we will have the biggest uh, Christian church in town. And it would be the tallest building in town. And I was telling our congregation about our vision. And I said, um, and, and there will be a balcony around our church building. And there will be people coming from everywhere. And after the message, a guy came to me and said, that's impossible. You cannot do that. We don't have the resources to build that big sanctuary. And I've seen that most pessimist people are, are Christian that, that are in the church. I don't know if I say that word. Most pessimist people sometimes are in the church. We limit God with our limited vision. Vision is an essential element to pursuing a life of excellence. But where, where do we get vision? How can we get that vision? I believe, number one, vision comes from God. So what are the use of vision in our lives? God gave us vision to guide us and direct us. God gave us vision to reveal His will and His plan. God gave us vision to show us our true potential in life. I remember when I was a young missionary student down in Marietta, Ohio, I've been praying to God that God will give me a musical family. 
a family that will love music. I was yet single that time, but I've been praying for my children that they'll get involved in music ministry. In fact, whenever I see some pawn shop, I always stop by and buy some old musical instruments. I was yet single, but I already got two violins. I already got two flutes. I already got a bunch of guitar, harmonicas, accordion, and a bunch of keyboard. Because my vision is, I was praying that God will give me children that will involve in music. And God answered my prayer. And God gave me that vision. Because God gave me five children that are involved in music. I remember my daughter, she is now 17 years old. She can play violin. My son, who is 16 years old, he can play keyboard, bass guitar, and guitar. And then my children, my three little children, the, uh, my middle daughter, she plays the recorder. I don't know if that the, 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 the musical instrument you know. It's some kind of a flute that you, uh, it's a plastic flute. We call it a recorder. Is that what you call it too? She plays the recorder. And even my son who was born here 10 years ago, he, he plays the recorder as well. And then my youngest son, he's about six years old, he can play, uh, I think they call it cajon. It's a small box, like a speaker box that you sat on it and you tap it and it sounded like a, a drum set. So when I, heard that, when I heard them playing that and I said, could you play me a, a, a song? And they played Amazing Grace. And I got so excited and I said, you're really good and that has been my prayer for so many years that you will learn to play musical instruments that God will give me a musical family. So when, when they played Amazing Grace, I right away went to the market and buy them and, and, and bought them ice cream as the consolation. And I said, could you, could you play another music? Could you play another song? And they played Happy Birthday to You. Not even my birthday, but they played Happy Birthday to You. So my kids loves music, and I can say that we are musical family. Because my kids play musical instruments, I play guitar, I play keyboard and piano. And I'm proud to say that even my wife can play the radio. <laughs> it's an answer to our prayer. It's because of vision. Vision brings us out the best in people. God gave us vision to new level in life. God's vision is always possible because it comes from God. Number two, I believe that vision comes from our past. Vision is based on our failure. Did you know that nothing prepares us for the future like experiences? Failure teaches us to expect more from ourselves and life. Failure teaches us what not to do. Failure are merely new opportunities to rely on God. So I would encourage you, don't be afraid to fail. Because sometimes failure are new opportunity to rely more on God. Let's focus our vision on the future. Because vision helps us mark and measure our success. Visions give us the drive to push when personal desire is to quit. Vision gives the ability to grow and dream great dreams. I believe that our vision comes from God. I believe that vision comes from our past. And I also believe that our vision comes from within. What you are and what you are in is your vision. True vision became, become a part of who you are. Because vision can never be taken away from us unless we allow it. Vision helps us to tackle life 
with enthusiasm. So if, whenever you got discouraged, whenever you got some disappointment, your vision will help you to keep on going. Because I believe you won't get tired of doing something unless you have passion. And our passion motivates our vision to keep on going. Vision makes life worth living. As one man says, dissatisfaction and discouragement are not caused by the absence of things, but the absence of vision. Vision never comes a reality without putting it into action. According to George, George Barna, vision for the ministry is a reflection of what God wants to accomplish through you to build His kingdom. So what is vision all about? Well, vision is not the same as ambition. Because ambition is what a man desires to become in life. But I believe vision is what God created him to become. The only meeting point of the two is where the will of man is lost in the will of God. And I can say that vision is higher than ambition. To become truly successful in life, you need vision must become your ambition. So what what this verse mean? Well, according to the Hebrew word, the word perish has three meaning in Hebrew word uh, in English. But in Hebrew word perish means para, p a r a, which has three meaning, and that is to become naked, zero or barren, or to go backward. Now. Uh, well, vision. So if so, it, the word, the word vision, it, uh, the word vision in Hebrew, it means chazan. That means mental picture. So if we put that word together, we will have a word in Proverbs twenty nine eighteen. The interpretation is this: If you have no mental picture, you will go backward. Think about that. If we have no vision, we will go backward. So what is a vision? Vision is the ability to see the future achievement of God's personal plan for your life. And I can say that vision is all about awareness. Vision is all about attitude. Vision is all about action. It involved people. Well, and I can say that because of our vision, we, will, we are all connected in mission. Because of our common vision, we are all connected. So what are the hindrances to vision? There are six hindrances of not achieving our vision, and that is living in division, taking no action, having no passion, complacency, carnality, and carelessness. As, as before I turn it over to the pastor, I would like to challenge you with a question. What do you see five years from now? What is your vision Five years from now, what is God's given vision for your family, for your church, and for your ministry? I hope you won't get tired of having that vision. I hope and pray that you will keep on praying to God, that God will send you a vision. Because all of our vision are possible, especially when it comes when it all come from our God. Folks, the reason why I'm standing here in front of you, because of my vision. I have a vision that we will have this ministry, that we will have this building, so that we can train more Filipinos to reach our own people. 
The reason why you have this beautiful building now, because there was a man had a vision. But the question is, how about you? Do you have the same vision that your pastor has? Our vision will connect us from one another. Our vision will connect us even to the uttermost part of the earth. But if you don't have that vision, you will not get connected. So I pray that you will remember this verse where there is no vision, the people perish. God bless you and thank you very much. What they're doing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the encouragement in your word and the way that your word comes alive, not only as we read it and we understand it through your Holy Spirit, breathing it into us, into our mind, our soul, our spirit, as we understand it and pray about how we can apply it and make it living in our lives. But thank you for the way that your word is living through other believers. I thank you for Brother Jason and Regina and for their family and the inspiration that they bring as people of faith. And Lord, we see that this goes beyond culture. It goes beyond language barriers because these are the things of life. These are the things of your creation. You have made us all, Lord, in your image. We all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We acknowledge that. We ask for your forgiveness, and we thank you that through Christ Jesus, you have given us a mediator, one who has given his life for us as a human being and as God, so that through the resurrection, his resurrection, and through your Holy Spirit working in, among, and through us, Lord, we can experience that forgiveness, that atoning, that grace through the blood of Christ, through his resurrection, and we can live now resurrection lives with a vision that you give us. So I'm praying right now for every person who has heard this message. Lord, use it to inspire them, encourage us, help us to have a vision for ourselves, for our family, for our community, for your church, Lord, wherever you have placed us and wherever we may go that, Lord, we may truly bring about, as you taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, Father, help us to do so with the power of the Holy Spirit in all humility and yet also courageously and unashamedly. And so give us that vision individually and collectively, and I just give you thanks, Lord, for the guidance that you give us through Christ, through your Holy Spirit, and through your written word. In Jesus' name, amen.